Hi, and welcome to Knitting on the Float. My name is Tracy, and I'm your host. I am coming to you from a gorgeous, sunshiny day in the Vancouver area. It is the last day of September. The sun is out. It is glorious outside, which really makes up for the past week, which was very, very overcast. I hope that wherever you are, you are enjoying your last bit of September or early October, whenever you're watching this. And I hope that you are ready to sit down, take some time for yourself, craft a little while, while I chatter away about what I've gotten up to the past three weeks. And I do have four very exciting projects to chatter away about. But before I get to those, let me tell you where you can find me. I am Tracy RR on Ravelry, and I am at Knitting on the Float on Instagram. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. This is a podcast where I primarily talk about knitting. I do have a cross-stitch project or two in the background, but they have not had any love recently. I dream of sewing, but this podcast today is all about the knitting, so welcome. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for your patience. Yes, I know I said I was going to be back last week. However, last week I only had two projects to chatter about and there really wasn't that much. This week I now have double the amount to talk about and I've got some exciting things to share as well and a finished object. So I think hopefully waiting that extra week was worth the wait. Anyway, welcome back and let us get to some tea time. I know that you have your requisite beverage, whatever it is, me, it's tea. For you, it might be a lovely glass of wine, a cup of coffee, it might be some beautiful fresh water, whatever it is you are drinking, let's grab it and let us make a cheer. Today, for me, plain old Marks and Spencer, I am now down to, I'm trying, one cup of caffeine a day. So I try to make my cup of caffeine very very worth it today i am drinking out of this lovely emma bridgewater mug it's personalized it was a gift from a lovely friend and i think it's perfect for fall now that we are in that autumn season in the northern hemisphere and oh my goodness how is it fall already let us cheer to a brand new season lots of crafting and lovely visits together Cheers to that. I'm hoping that that extra week was worth the wait because now there are four projects on the couch where last week there would have only been two. Now we have visited this project before. This is living in my lovely bird leg bags, summer camper van, going to the beach bag. And inside this, I have my Snowdrift Cowl. That's a pattern by Tracy Arnold, who is the dyer of Nora George Yarns. And last time we visited, I shared this version with you that I knit when I was in Toronto, but it was a little bit too small. I used 3.5 millimeter needles on this version, and it's just a little bit too tight to be wrapped around twice without the recipient, who is my mother, feeling that she's being strangled. So what happened was she had been gifted a lovely skein of yarn from Sharon, who is the knitting project, and I absconded with it and knit another version of the snowdrift cowl. I will be sending it back to her. So here is my yarn. I am getting down to the last little bits and this is Zebra One of a Kind from Hedgerow Yarns and it is a fun, fun yarn to knit with. <sighs> I really should have this done as a finished object because I've actually finished the knitting portion. I've popped on that beautiful Corner of Craft Progress Keeper I got last time that I was visiting with you. It is now done, except for the fact I now need to pick up my provisional cast on with another set of four millimeter needles 
and I just need to graft it together. So really, my only excuse for not getting this done was I was too lazy to go upstairs and grab another set of needles so I could graft this properly. I am a little bit nervous that it won't quite block out as big as I would like it to. I want it to comfortably wrap around my mom's neck twice and have room so that she doesn't feel like she's being strangled. Blocking is magic. Crossing fingers, that blocking will make this cowl much, much bigger. Hopefully the next time we visit, I will have gone upstairs, gotten another set of four millimeter needles and grafted this together, blocked it, done all that thing, all that stuff that we need to do to make it beautiful. And then hopefully we will have another finished object to share with you. I also, in addition to blocking this one, I need to re-block this version as well. I, I did a really awful job blocking this when I hung it on my mom's line outside at her place, but it needs the wires and it just needs to be just soaked once more, stretched out a little bit more. And I'm still not 100% sure what I'm going to do with this one. It will probably make a lovely gift because it is absolutely gorgeous and those colors. This is from the Nature Collection by uh, Nora George Yarns and there were 10 minis and I used all 10 and they have knit up beautifully together. Just a little too small. The nice thing about doing this one with one color is no ends to secure in through the I-cord edging. Anyway, hopefully the next time we visit this will be completely off the needles and I won't have to worry about dropping stitches, grafted, blocked, all that stuff that makes knitting magic. But in the meantime, both this, the little ball of yarn that I've dropped on the ground because on the podcast, something will always drop on the ground. So these two plus this one that needs to be reblocked, all going back in the bird leg bags ready for me to finish it off. The next project I'm going to share with you, I can't share much about other than this is going to be released this upcoming Thursday, October 5th. And this project has been living in my lovely bag that one of my friends gifted to me. She loved the fact it said bits and bobs on it. And these are the final pair of socks from this year's Handmade Sock Society. And last time we visited, I grabbed the bag, grabbed the yarn. I hadn't cast on yet. It is now cast on. One sock is done. I'm in. I've just finished the heel flap. I need to do the heel turn and then picking up the gusset and the foot and then the toe. And then I will have a completed pair of Handmade Sock Society Pattern 6 socks, which I will share with you at some point next week. I am using the lovely Wool Barn yarn. This is a BFL sock in the color Duck Egg. And for Pattern 4, I believe it was, the Paper Wings socks that Helen knit, she used this colorway in a different base but I thought it would be a lot of fun. I had this in my stash to use this for pattern number six and it is knitting up beautifully. But last night, instead of working on my heel turn and through the gusset, which I always find the most challenging part in a pair of socks, I was naughty and I did a brand new cast on instead, which I will talk a little bit about in a moment. But in the meantime, Handmade Sock Society, pattern six. This season is almost done. Six patterns completed. Next Thursday, I'll be able to share this on Instagram. And then as I said, when we visit next, I will share the finished socks with you. The next project was that naughty, naughty cast on, and it is living in my gorgeous, I think this is a Bags by Awesome Granny bag. I better double check. Yes, it is. Bags by Awesome Granny. And when I saw this haunted house fabric last year, I believe, I could not resist. I mean, there's a moon, full moon with bats, and it was a full moon last night. So perfect for a, a cast on. 
and then the haunted house who can resist so in this bag is one of the knit vent 2023 patterns this is going to be the big one i'm not quite sure that i've got enough room in this bag but i really wanted to make sure that i used this gorgeous halloween bag it'll be in here for as long as it fits anyway i cannot share what is physically in here now however i do have my yarns off to the side and i will share those so for this pattern and this is the big one I am using minis and I am holding them double with mohair. So I'm using Hedro Yarns Mohair. This is silk and kid silk lace. And it is just so lovely to hold double with pretty much everything. And I think I'll leave this out because it features in my next project too. So I'm holding my yarns double with that and I am already through one of my minis so far. Now I have five different mini packs that I'm using from Nora George Yarns and these are all the great characters of literature or their films, their sets that Tracy used to do several years ago. I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see them. So I started off with Sound of Music. So this one here is Raindrops on Roses. This one is Whiskers on Kittens, Bright Copper Kettles, Warm Woolen Mittens, and this one is Brown Paper Packages, of which we have none this week. So I am going to go in that order on this set. I've taken a photograph so I can remember. I am also using the Grease mini set. So this has Pink Ladies, Rizzo, Hopelessly Devoted, Blue Moon, and Summer Nights. And I'm not sure, I don't think I've got them in the correct order right now. I'm just sharing the, the colorways. This is the Chronicles of Narnia. So Mr. Tumnus. Pools Between the Worlds, Coats in the Wardrobe, The White Witch, and Aslan. And then this one is The Wizard of Oz. It's very yellow, but I will persevere. The minis go by really quickly. Yellow Brick Road. This one's Tin Man. Now I think I'm not going to include Tin Man because I need 24 minis not 25 so i think i'm going to take tin man out so i'll go from yellow brick road to the lion scarecrow and then toto and then the final set of minis i have here are from the murder on the orient express and so this one is ratchet red kimono daisy mrs hubbard and the first class lounge now I know this is going some, I think this is going more in the middle because I believe I am using the grease set to end off. Because I wanted to end off with those Christmas reds and pinks, especially since I started off with this color. And as I mentioned, I am holding it double with some lovely kid silk mohair. So, Knit Vent 2023 has been cast on for me and I saw pictures this morning of this project. It is whew, beautiful. So, so beautiful. I think you're going to love it and I'm really excited to see how my colors all knit up and uh, always exciting to do knit vent. I'm not sure when the release dates are going to be at this point but I was so excited to get that cast on last night when I got the pattern and I'm just starting to knit, knit away. So that is the project that will sort of be living in this bag and maybe a little bit on the loose as I grab packs of minis to go. But let me just like first mini almost gone and I think we're going to have 
most of the minis will be used up. So 20 gram minis, this is going to be a big, big project. I've had to order some more hedgerow kid silk mohair and hopefully I'll get that before too long. Um, Jane's yarns are always so lovely to receive and um, I just didn't quite have enough to do this project. I think there's somebody out in a boat. If you can hear that motor, there's someone out on the waterway. So, knit vent, yes, it's happening again. And I'm gonna pop my glasses off. Final project that I am going to share with you has been living in this lovely bird likes bag since I believe I cast this on way back in the late winter, early spring. And it's been off the needles for quite some time now. I'm finally able to share this with you because Danny, who is Little Bobbins, released her lovely goose eggs throw pattern today. And that is what has been living in here. Now for the goose eggs throw, I held my yarns double with hedgerow yarns. I used two skeins of a BFL sock and I also used some minis from Miss Babs. And here is my gorgeous, gorgeous goose eggs throw. This was the colorway from Tracy of Nora George Yarns called Afterglow and it had pretty much all of the colors from the minis that I used. So I had, and I did it like a rainbow. So I started off with here, the R, Roy, Roy G. Biff. So the red started here. I went into the orange. We then turn. I did yellow, green. We turn again. It's kind of like a flying geese quilt. We go into the greeny, tealy blue, into the blue, and then into the indigo violet. So I used some really, really bright, bright yarns. These minis were so fun to knit with. And oh my goodness, this project is absolutely wonderful. I love knitting it and it is so, so squishy. This is actually going to be heading to Australia in the next few days because I'm donating it to Karina, who is the dyer of Louie and Lola Yarns. And every year she has her Hope and Sunshine breast uh, cancer fundraising. And last year I donated my anthology shawl. This year I am donating this gorgeous goose eggs quilt. And I hope that whoever wins it absolutely loves it. It is squishy and oh, so, so beautiful. So it was lovely to wake up this morning. I turned on Instagram and I saw Danny's goose eggs quilt laid out. I went, yes, it is a wonderful day. I had been thinking about podcasting and then when I saw that pattern, it was definitely a reason to podcast. So the goose eggs quilt, a wonderful pattern by Daniel George Little Bobbins and such an easy knit. It would be perfect if you have an advent kit coming. You could do all different colors for each of the triangles where I've gone with all my small triangles in the one colorway by Tracy and that took two skeins of the BFL sock. Um, and then I used a mini for each of the big triangles. And so there's so many ways that you could do this. You could use leftover lovelies, you could use an advent kit, you could stash dive, you could go to your local yarn shop. There are so, so many options, but this is a beautiful, beautiful throw, which as I mentioned, will be flying down under where it's spring and being put in the draws for the Hope and Sunshine raffles. So if this is something you're interested in winning, good luck if you join in the raffle. In the meantime, I will put it back in here, get it all ready for packaging and get it sent to Karina. But so, so excited to finally, finally, finally be able to share what was in that project. Now, as I mentioned, I have no brown paper packages, so we will go straight to Life Bits. Mm -hmm. 
It's now time for Bits and Bobs, and this is my segment where I talk about anything and everything not necessarily knitting related. And I have to tell you, it has been a full-on September. It is nice to finally be able to sit down at the end of September, have a lovely visit with you, because, well, I would love to try and find a perfect time to carve out some time with you. It has been challenging because usually there are people home today, the boys are both out, and that means that I can chatter away with you without feeling self-conscious. Greg's home, but he's in the other room, and yeah, I'm not as self-conscious with him because he knows I talk to myself all the time. It has been, as I mentioned, a very busy startup for September. Nathaniel has started high school. Isaac is doing his program at a local college and I have also returned to school and am working away on a musical theater diploma. And it has been hard work so far. The assignments are, I'm, I can just see them starting to pile up, so it's making me a little nervous. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to fit all the knitting in, and I want to do the knitting because I need that time to relax. Plus, I mean, knit vent. Oh. I love, love knit vent. So hoping to stay on top of it all. We have been choosing songs for our different eras. So we have to have two songs from 1960 to 2000. Those two songs for me are going to be Little Girls from Annie by Miss Hannigan. And I'm also, I'm not a huge Andrew Lloyd Webber fan, but I am going to try and tackle Memory from Cats. And then we have to have a song from 2000 to present. My original song was going to be Poor Unfortunate Souls from The Little Mermaid, but I already had a villain in Miss Hannigan, so I have changed that out to Burn from Hamilton. So those are the three songs that I'll be spending a lot of my time rehearsing, figuring out motivations, learning how to sing different techniques, figuring out where all the notes go, all that kind of stuff. And um, it is definitely a lot of work, but a lot of fun as well. The dance aspect of this program, however, is kicking me in the derriere. I, I've never had formal dance lessons, so I went into ballet, jazz, tap with no experience. A really nice pair of tap shoes, but no experience. And it has been hard, I will say, this past Monday, there may have been, there were a few tears. I just could not seem to figure out the dance sequence. And I could see it, I could work it out in my brain, sort of, but I just couldn't translate it into my body and I just, got so so frustrated so he gave us a couple minute break I went into the hall a couple tears came down pulled myself together went back in the classroom got back in the line started dancing again but Monday was definitely a hard day thankfully by Friday the rest of the week was much better but there will be days that it is frustrating this upcoming week I'm going to be starting some extra dance lessons with local dance schools and I'm going to be doing some introductory, uh, introductory tap classes. I'm going to do two of those and I'm also going to do an introductory ballet class because as I mentioned I've never taken dance before so when we're standing at the bar I'm just following along the people beside me. I have no idea what I'm doing so I need to learn a little bit more about how to do these things properly without just taking from my neighbors because I really am quite tragic at the dancing aspect. But it has been, as I mentioned, fun so far. I've made it through a month. It has been hard work. I'm not getting in as much knitting as I would like, although I am doing lots of bus knitting, so that has been good. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that is happening around here it's it's really for me been mainly school knitting lots of homework coming home trying to enjoy time at home getting that relaxation trying to figure out what that new balance is while i am enjoying school it is 
a bit of a challenge to carve out time to podcast. I like to podcast when nobody's at home. Right now, Greg's at home, but the boys are both out. So it's been a wonderful day to just sit down, spend some time visiting with you, and not worry about all the little ears listening or people coming out grabbing a sandwich while I'm trying to chatter away. I'm not sure how the podcast will be moving forward because, as I mentioned, it has been a little bit more difficult to find that time to carve out, plus with all the assignments. I am hoping that every time I have a lovely finished object to share with you, I'll be able to carve out some time and share it with you, especially as we approach Knitvent. Next week, I am definitely excited to share the last pattern from the Handmade Sock Society Season 5 with you. Though I'm not sure how much more I'll be able to share of the other things. I'll have a little bit of chatter on the new net knit vent, I suppose. And hopefully, crossing fingers, I will have grabbed those four millimeter needles and grafted off the snowdrift cowl. So perhaps a couple of finished objects to share with you next week. But for now, I think that's all I've got for bits and bobs. I have no footage from around the float house. There is a bear on campus. So if I ever happen to see the bear up at the university and I have a camera with me, I'll make sure I am distanced enough and try and get a photo or little video depending. I don't want to get too close because bears, you know, they can be a little bit dangerous. They'll also be going into hibernation soon, so maybe not too many more bear spottings in the next little while. Anyway, that is all I have for Bits and Bobs this week. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today as I have chattered away about the projects that I've been working on the past few weeks and also given you a little bit of a life update. I hope that wherever you are, you are enjoying the new season, whether it is autumn or spring, and that you have been able to carve out some wonderful crafting time for yourself. I look forward to visiting with you next week. It is Canadian Thanksgiving weekend next weekend, so I'm pretty sure I will be able to carve out a little bit of time, in addition to a turkey. I'm not carving a turkey, but we are going to have a lovely turkey dinner. Um, I will definitely make sure I carve out a little bit of time to share this wonderful project with you. In the meantime, I am wishing you a wonderful week ahead and I look forward to sitting down with you next week and sharing what I've gotten up to in that time. Have a wonderful week. Bye. I have so much going through my brain right now. It's a good thing for taking photographs because I would never remember which order I was going to put all of these minis. So thankfully I took a photograph yesterday. So the first set is going to be this one and we're going that way right and left confused all the time. Starting here, going across that way. Although, when you're looking at it, is it better to go this way across? So confused. Anyway, I think it's this way across. So this is the um, sound of music. And then the next one I will be using is the Murder on the Orient Express. So I'll go from brown paper packages into this yellow here and then this gorgeous purple lovely pink and purple red and then this amazing speckled colorway will be the tenth mini and then using my photographs to help me through this the next one will be the Wizard of Oz and as I mentioned, I will not be using the Tin Man and I will be starting off with this yellow and then into this orangey 
yellow, this one here, and then the brown at the end. And then we go into, I think it's the Chronicles of Narnia. I have to use my photograph to help me, but it's not being very helpful right now. There we are. Chronicles of Narnia next. And I am starting off with Mr. Tumnus and going across to Aslan. So those colors. And then the final one, as I mentioned in the podcast, will be Greece. And I will be ending off with these two here. So starting off with this pink. Oh my goodness, look at that little bit of bluey purple in there. So pink, white, blue, purple, blue, purple with pink, red, and then almost like a candy cane stripe. So those are the order that I will be doing my lovely knit vent, big, huge minis pattern in and uh, holding double with mohair. It's gotta be absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. If I can keep it straight. 